Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, recording started. Thank you. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Welcome to TSAC's official meeting. Today's Friday, March 15th. Um, let's start with attendance. I will. I'm going to read. Alejandro. I'm here. Sorry. No, you're good. Thank you. Uh, Matt. Matthew Rath, been present. Michael. Here. Thanks. And Will. Howdy. Hi. And I'm Denny Palacios. Sweet. We even uh, we do not meet quorum. Would anybody we will not be able to approve the agenda, but we'll start with updates um until another person joins. Yes, Will. Oh, uh, I had John call me. Um he wanted to state that he will be joining the meeting in 20 minutes or so. So I don't know how. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. OK, sounds good. Um, OK, well, maybe Gabe will also show up, but um, let's start with reading the mission statement and then we'll probably if nobody else shows up, then we'll won't get to vote in any business. Um, who wants to read the mission statement? I'll read it. Thanks, Matt. Um, our mission is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Sweet. Thank you. Um, let's start with announcements and updates. Mike, when you were when you said you were here, you sounded very, very far away. But you're up for Board of Trustees. I have no updates. OK. I have SACAP, so Will. Uh, so we approved funding for Earth Week. Instead of Earth Day, it's Earth Week for uh, ASEP. And um, it was about $3,500 for uh, mobile food truck kind of thing. And um, yeah, so we, we please, approved please some money for that. SACAP approved money? OK. Yes. OK. A resolution brought uh, forward by uh, actually Gabe Trujillo. And yeah, so we approved that resolution. There's also, they're wanting the the Aurora, Aurora excuse me, uh, the project, right, to to build the I forget the name, the official name of the board, but they wanted me with the with all SACAP members and um, to discuss more details about the the project. OK. Um, um, and then I, I wasn't there for the first half of the meeting, the first 10, 10, 15 minutes. So maybe Gabe has more on those first 10, 15 minutes that I might have missed. OK, well, now that Gabe is here, before we proceed, we should uh, approve the agenda. Um, does everybody have a chance to read it? Does anyone have any objections with the agenda? No, sweet. OK, everybody who agrees, say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Thank aye. you. Uh, Gabe, do you have any updates for us on Seika? Oh yeah, just um, in that first part of the meeting, we had a um, a presentation about the compost, um, and and how the compost is going here at, at ASCP. ASCP. Wow, so so many so many letters, um, and and it was a, a great update because I don't know if 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 I don't think it's, it's widely known as much, but uh, ASCP that has its own a uh, compost, a uh, process now, um, and it's and it's. Up and running and stuff, and so they gave us like a presentation of of how, how that happened and how they got to the place that they got to right now. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Um, accountability committee is Re here. I don't see Re. 
Um, Alejandro, anything on the project committee? Uh, no updates. Okay. Uh, PR committee, any updates? Uh, we're setting up our next meeting, but no updates at this time. Okay. John is not here. Um, open floor announcements or updates? No, sweet. Okay, then I'm gonna jump to mine to the faculty and staff senate. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys remember, but around two months ago, we were there was some confusion and how waitlisting worked for the university. Um, so if a student goes into wait into wait yeah into the wait list of a class, um, they have to drop themselves manually. Otherwise, you know, like they won't be dropped out of the class even if they didn't show up. Um, and uh, it was approved, and the, the upcoming in the catalog that is coming out, or I think oh, it's it's already out. Um, so that would be the case that if a student did not show up to a certain amount of classes, uh, it would they would be automatically dropped out of the class. However, the technology isn't ready for it, so that method cannot be implemented. And due to the very, very lengthy process that goes in catalog making and any handbook and any document that it is official for the university it is again very lengthy and very complex it requires like a lot of different committees and a lot of different input um it would be irresponsible to just pull the the catalog back and change the language without the procedure um so what they're asked what faculty has decided it's that we tell students uh, that to do like a mass communication effort within the university so that we can like let students know that this is not out the door we're just trying to figure out um the technology still and it is it is an in process uh mechanism um i will be meeting with isabel this tuesday and i will probably i'm probably going to need some help from met media and also i told him i told him we would help with met media and the runner um but that i needed a, like an official form of communication from the registrar's office so that we could um utilize the language that is expected out of us so, yeah uh the council of chairs and directors has not met so i have no updates on that advisor updates Ria is also here. Thank you, Kenny. Do we do we want Ria to give her updates before we go? Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Accountability committee. Hi, just to let you know that I have um, received um, a letter for misconduct investigation uh, about one of our members, and I am uh, Gabe and I will be working on that over the next couple of weeks because I know we're not meeting after we're doing our day of service and we will have a report in um, early April for the full council about that. Thank you, Ree. Thank you, Ree. Um, I'll go ahead and go uh, next, I guess. Um, I The big updates are around elections. Just want to remind everyone um, that that is going on. Armando and Sam have been working um, really diligently on that. And so, and I know there um, have been, I think, some extensions on timeline um, to the 29th uh, for, because of the snow days um, yesterday and today. So just so you all know, um, in terms of getting packets in, that's that extension was made because of the the snow. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing, just as a reminder, the day of service, we just met a little while ago. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put information on how everyone needs to sign up. Um, either I'm going to do it both in the calendar invite that I sent to you all, um, but then I'll also send an email because um, people 
I don't know, whatever works better for you all to go ahead um, and get folks to be signed up for the March 29th day of service. Just so you know, there are various options. Um, if folks have to work or have other commitments, there are a full day option. There are half day options. There are options in the evening, options in the morning. So we try to make it as flexible as possible um, just so that um, everyone has the opportunity who can to um, serve. So I will go ahead and send that and want to thank everyone for supporting Roadrunners Give Back. Um, that's really important. And we have so far some really good numbers. So we're excited about that. Um, and again, we're doing this in partnership with the Allstate Grant Foundation, and we are hopeful that we will continue to receive this grant around civic engagement um, in the future. So there's that. Um, and then what else? Um, we will be resuming our normal meeting again on April 5th. Armando and I are working on developing a curriculum, just so you all are aware. Um, for the new incoming council. Um, that will be a course that we would like for all incoming council members to take um, in the summertime. Um, it'll be a course on Canvas and we're wanting to offer a hybrid model where it will be online, but then we'll be offering um, at least a, a couple of in-person things as well. But we're finalizing that curriculum and what that looks like. We feel like there are some really foundational things that incoming counselors should know. And we're hoping if we take care of that during the summer, that it will be preventative and proactive um, in terms of setting the council up for success next year. So I'm excited about that. Um, and we're working um, we're working on that as well as the leadership retreat in August. And inauguration, just as a reminder, inauguration is May 3rd. Um, so that's another thing that is important for that we will put on your calendars. Um, and hoping that you can help us welcome the new counselors who will be joining us for the next academic year. I think that's it. I don't know if I missed anything, but I'll let Armando touch on whatever I missed. Thank you, everyone. No, you got pretty much got it all. <laughs> <laughs> just marking them off my list. Um, that was the biggest things uh, right now, just to retouch on the day of service uh, piece. The only people we have signed up right now are Alejandro, Mike, and Will. Um, we did cancel the meeting so that folks can sign up. Re, if you sign up, I will double check right now when I got the, the numbers today. That's all I had. Um, but the link, I know Tony had dropped it into our big TSEC chat, um, so you can sign up through there. That was the biggest thing. Um, so if you can sign up by the end of the day, that would be great. Okay. Will do. Thank you. And Tony just dropped it in the chat yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tony, but you still had something to say, right? I saw you raise your hand. Maybe. I think I she think. was probably just going to uh, okay. re reiterate the Susan Travis part. Awesome. Okay. Sam, election updates. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, the it's basically been hit on already. We extended the candidate the candidate application due date to Friday, March 29th, just to give more time after spring break and due to the snow days for people to get signatures and uh, such. Um, my two big events coming up are orientation, which is required for all candidates running, uh, which will be on April 2nd at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. That'll be online and in person. And then on April 3rd, we're going to have a candidate town hall at St. Cash uh, from 3.30 to 5. Um, even if you're not running again, it might still be fun for people on the council to currently come, kind of like see what's up with the new council, maybe ask some questions. So I definitely encourage coming to that. I'll be uh, catering it so there'll be free food for everybody. And we might have some swag out too. So that should be a fun event. But uh, yeah, April 2nd for returning candidates and April 3rd for anyone interested. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, everybody. That was quick. Um, wow. Uh, let's move into business. <laughs> Re has a hand up. Oh, sorry, Re. I missed open um, floor announcements, and so I just wanted to briefly um, broach that uh, Armando and I met with Dr. Barone and um, Armando Alejandro and I met with Dr. Barone about the safety workshop recommendations we wanted to put forward, and um, we have a document that I believe was shared with everybody um, that to put our ideas together before approaching 
again, um, Dean Tackett's office because I talked to him about this last fall and he's waiting to hear from us on this. So if you haven't gone into that, please look, you would have been sent, I think in the chat, Alejandro put it in the chat um, about everyone um, having a look at this and it's only one page, it, just our ideas together. And then we're gonna try to set a meeting with Dean Tackett about how you know we can contribute to this, although probably not lead because we are thin on the ground now. So <laughs> just wanted y'all to know, that's all. Thanks, Ree. Cool, let's move into business. Um, housing election conference. Alejandro, since it's my resolution, I'm gonna need you to take the lead on this when I'm done talking about it. You're good? Alejandro, give me a thumbs up, please. Yeah. Thank you, Dun. Um, Sweet. So the only thing that I changed, and I did do it within 24 hours, it was, um, can we, you, we move to the very last part of it, Kenny? Thank you. So the only thing that I changed was that, oh, uh, where did uh, it go? Jenny, this might be an old document. Uh, wait for me. See if I can find a new one. Okay. Well, things were broken down. They provided a spreadsheet and things were broken down. Um, they're asking for a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand dollars for uh, the speaker stipend and then for the speaker flight and then the other 2000 to do food. Uh, the other thing that you guys asked for last meeting was if any other department was contributing. And I feel like we need to be critical of this. Um, so the political science department is providing a thousand dollars. AHEC is providing nine hundred and eighteen dollars. The president, yeah, the president's office is contributing twenty eight hundred, and that is a total of four thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars in some sense for you know from other departments um i made it clear that i i very much doubted that we would be willing to be matching that contribution um i do think that whatever if we approve this and whatever amount it is that we approve now that dr simpkins is coming today we should ask him to match our contribution as the dean of uh, so with his office and Dean Tackett. Um, I don't know. I am done talking. I will leave the thing to Alejandro. So are we basically just going to be voting on this now? Well, people have questions. Kenny. Yes, Kenny. Oh, sorry. Kenny? Uh, yeah, so a couple things. Um, Dr. Simpkins will not be coming in today. Uh, oh. Yeah, we are rescheduled for April 12th, and this is the new document you were talking about, right, Benny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and just to, I'm going to directly answer to Alejandro. So I guess we are voting, but I did not change the number um, on the bill. Oh. But I, I mean, if, of course, like, it is up to all of us in whatever numbers you guys want to. Right, the open the floor is open to a discussion, and I think make sure we're on those seven minutes. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm whatever number we we decide on. Gabe, thank you. Uh, so, to, so to confirm that I heard this correctly, um, all the other partners for this program will be donating. Well, in total, would be four thousand dollars that they would be contributing together and then they're expecting us the students to contribute to basically match that in a sense well like almost almost fully match it but like keeping that four thousand range and so we would be giving basically like half we'll be having funding half of this event is that what i'm understanding correctly um if i'm just may answer yes that's what i'm yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> Um, I also like, yeah, I also don't feel comfortable with it. Um, 
this is, however, they're not just asking for the four thousand dollars as just like, oh, this is an arbitrary, not like because they're asking us to match it. This is the donation we gave last year to this same foundation and with the same purposes. Um, you know, I'm just I'm trying to make sure that things are happening within my due process and that things are happening the way they're supposed to be happening. Um, and, and that's why, like, I'm not going to. If you like, Gabe, if you have a, a number that you would like to throw in, like, please, let's let's talk about it. Do you still have a question, Gabe? I do, but like, if anyone wants to jump in with anything else before, just the yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, I just have a quick question too. Um, so how many departments exactly are going to be um, participating in this like donate as well? So for now, um, let me, I'm so sorry, I have to switch screens. Um, it seems that there are three departments involved and four with us. So in total with those three, they're going to be donating 4,000 and then, sorry, I'm just trying to understand this. So out of those three departments um the total that they're going to be donating is four thousand and then we're going to be ma matching that yes but again the the reason for the 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 foundation asked for four thousand dollars wasn't because they want us to match the institution it just happens to be that the amount of money they are contributing matches what we contributed last year i see okay yeah, it wasn't a, hey, can you match this? It was more like, hey, this is what you contributed last year. Um, can you do it again? And if not, they're OK with us. Of course, like they're OK with us not. I'm just I'm just making sure we're transparent about other departments contribution. OK, uh, Gabe. Thank you. Yeah, so with that, I I was the one who who, who authored that last year. Um, and I also went to the tabling event for it because we, we were given a, a table for the conference. And honestly, in my opinion, I think that I, I didn't see a lot of students attend that conference. Um, I really didn't, you know, see too too many students being there. And so I really do also feel um, that after seeing that event and, and evaluating from that perspective, I do think that the four thousand is per is fairly high uh, compared to what other departments are doing. So I would propose a friendly amendment of bringing that 4,000 down to 2,000, which then would cut, oh, cut off, like it would be f 500 for speaker stipend, 500 for speaker travel, and then 1,000 for food services. Um, OK, so I think so I, I think the thing is with with like the very specific numbers is the fact that um, as our process requires us, we're only allowed to buy things with the credit card that we have been provided, like our designated credit card. Um, so for that, I was thinking that maybe whatever number we propose, it would just be for us paying paying for the food. Um, because I don't I don't know if like the process of paying for the speaker's stipend would be less complex. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, thank you for that clarification. So with that, I'll shift my friend my friendly amendment to to to, to donate two thousand instead of the four thousand and just have that for the food services. Um, I I will second it. <laughs> Um, yeah, anybody has it? Oh, sorry, Alejandro. Bad habits. <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor for Gabe's friendly amendment? Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Um, okay. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? Cool. Okay. Is gonna look something like this. Um, let's just take the the second two thousand dollars in the little. Yep. Like this. Perfect. 
Yep. Okay, okay I'm gonna motion that we close discussion. I second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Cool. Okay, then I'm gonna motion that we vote for <laughs> I second. <laughs> Lovely. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Cool. Sweet. Thanks, guys. I will get back to them uh, today and I will start forwarding whatever the process comes up with that. Thank you. Just make sure also that they like um, send us the invoice so we can pay it because essentially we can't send them the money for them to do it. So, right. Um, right. And I will. Yeah. Can I have them? Can I have him like contact you to do that process, Alejandro? Uh, yeah. I mean, essentially, I think it would be better for either Armando or Dr. Brown since they're the ones that have the cards. OK, OK, then I will. I will. I already have a thread going on with them, so I will just add it to the two two of them. So we are, yeah, so you can help them out with. It. Thank Sounds you. Good. I I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Okay, uh, it is one o'clock. It is time for public comment. If anybody here is here for public comment, please make yourselves known. Otherwise, we we're going to continue with business until someone uh, speaks. Um, okay, second item in the agenda, feedback for experimental majors roadmap. Will? Hey, uh, so for the feedback, I will pull that back. I should have said that sooner. Um, the snow caused some issues for our speaker, unfortunately. Um, and they emailed me, but I will have to pull back the feedback for the experimental major major rope rope map and have to uh, get with them and see what's the next best available date for feedback for that. OK, sounds good. Let's just be careful with approving agendas. If we have information. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um. Oh well, we have our first presentation is not coming until one fifteen. Look at us being efficient. Yeah, I told them all to join the call by one ten, so they should be joining here soon. Sweet. Um, I vote we take a. I mean, sorry, I motion we take a break of until one ten. I second. I second. That. Sweet. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any, any, oh, sorry. any abstentions? Sorry. Tony's typing something. Um, oh, she stopped. Okay. I will see you guys back at 1 p 1 10 p.m. Please mute your microphones. While you all are on this break, I take it for those who have not registered, you can take this time to register for the Cesar Chavez Day of service. That is a great idea. I will do that. Um, also, I'm going to I'm going to stay here just in case somebody shows up for public comment. Awesome.
Sweet. Okay, it is one ten. We are back. Um, let me make sure. Cassie Gibbs. Um, Cassie, are, hi, are you from uh, the honors program? Uh, yes, I'm just here to support Caroline. Okay. Yeah, hi. Hi, Caroline. Hi. Sorry, I couldn't see your names for a while. Um, sweet. Um, do you have another student coming in or is, is it just the two of you? It's just going to be the two of us today. Sweet. Um, we're ready if you're ready. Is there anything you need from us or uh, our grand executive assistant? Um, we did send up for a presentation that if we could put that up. If not, I can also share it as well. Um, it was just like a slideshow. I sorry, Kenny was gonna say something. I have the presentation. Um, it's up to you which one is easier. If it's easier for you to just bring it up on your own, yeah, I, you have control to do that too. I would, uh, yeah, Caroline. Let's have you share it so that you can control. Yeah, how we like the flow of it. Yeah, definitely. Just give me one second. Thank you. All right, can everybody see that? Yes. All right. Well, then here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Blackwell, and today I am I am the Secretary of the Honors Council, and I'm going to be talking about an upcoming event, which is the second annual MSU Denver Spring Ball, um, and how TSAC can help us with pulling off this event. So to start off with, I think it's really important to outline some of our goals and purposes for this event. We are looking to create a more community based atmosphere on campus, and we are trying to encourage partnerships between organizations so that students can kind of see where their tuition money is going and what different organizations on campus do for them as students. We also want to connect alumni with current students in a fun atmosphere and bring them back onto campus so that they have that school pride and are able to still continue to go to events on school. And we also are planning to connect our rainforest jungle theme to current sustainability and environmental awareness. We want to make sure that it's still a fun event, but we also are talking about what may be going on within rainforests and jungles current day. And so that's really important to us to bring that piece into this event. The event will have food, music, there will be dancing and a photo booth. And again, it's an opportunity for students to network with other students and alumni and possibly faculty if they choose to attend. So some of the student benefits that we are looking for with this event is again to create an atmosphere where organizations are participating with school events and students can see that through attending these events. We want to allow students to connect with each other on a personal level. It's kind of difficult sometimes when you're in an 18 week course to connect with people on a personal level because all you really have time to talk about is what's going on in the course. And so this is a great opportunity for students to branch out and meet other students on a different level than they usually would in a class setting. We also want to give students on campus a chance to attend something that they maybe have not in the past. A lot of students were unable to attend prom because of COVID-19, and so this will allow them to have that experience before they leave school and go into the workforce. Again, it's a chance for alumni to reconnect and for students to have a fun activity to do outside of what typically happens on the campus. This is a picture of the save the date that we have sent out to students. It is um, a jungle themed ball. And so 
we have asked students to wear whatever makes them feel comfortable, whether that be neon clothes, a formal dress, or anything they feel confident in wearing. We would appreciate them to just feel comfortable. It's going to be at the Tivoli Turn Hall on April 6th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And so, yeah, this is kind of what we have set up. As far as how TSOC can help us, we are looking for funding for food. This here is a picture of what our quote looked like last year. It was around $7,000. And so we were hoping that TSAC could give us $3,000 to pay for some of our food costs. Obviously, the type of food and the amount of food we get will be dependent on how much money we receive. And so we will be trying to work with other organizations, but it would be really helpful for us to get that funding from TSAC so we could pull off this awesome event for students. Other than that, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you all today and for your consideration. Thank you, Caroline. Does anybody have any questions for the honors program? No, perfect. Um, and just, just, well, yeah. Hi, Alejandro. Yeah, so I seen that you are requesting 3,000, but um, TSAC is only eligible to give you half of what you're requesting because we have a capacity of 1,500 per organization. So um, we'll only be able to give you $1,500 worth of funding for that, just as an FYI. Okay. Sweet. Anybody else? Perfect. Let's, I motion that we vote for this. I second. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, everybody who agree with uh, funding f the honors program for this event, $1,500, please say aye. 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 Awesome. Any objections? Uh, I was muted. Aye, too. No, Any no object. Uh, I'm for it. <laughs> okay. Any abstentions? Sweet. Alejandro, I'm going to have you put your hand down because it's going to make it confusing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you, dude. Um, wonderful. Perfect. Uh, so we have approved the funding. Uh, Alejandro, we'll get back to you with an email following next steps. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Caroline. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have to step away because this is this is my org, so I have to step away from this one. Um, Alejandro will direct the meeting from here, and then I'll take back whenever NAC comes out. Cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, so unfortunately, they couldn't make it to the meeting right now, but they did send a video recording. Um, they sent it to Kenny, and uh, he's going to be presenting it right now. Good afternoon. My name is Ethan Smith, and today I'm here to ask for your help to get the MSU Denver United Nations team to the Model United Nations of the Far West Conference in San Francisco. Before we get too far into it, I think we should address what the Model UN actually is. <clears throat> it's just that. It's a model of the United Nations. Students who go will assume the role of a delegate representing a country and must tackle global conflicts through that perspective. Now, I'm going to ask for your help to get students to the conference. I think you should know how it's actually going to benefit students. They're going to develop a deep understanding of the United Nations and the international organizations that they cooperate with and how all of those groups operate. They're also going to develop and improve skills that they will bring back to campus, as well as the workplace, like public speaking and negotiation. This also provides students the opportunity to apply political concepts and work collaboratively towards a goal. <clears throat> Students who go and immerse themselves will see a lot of fantastic professional development, things like experience with official documents and achieving goals within them, and how to conduct themselves in a professional manner similar to political situations the university looks to prepare us for in the future. They'll also have exposure and application of various global pr perspectives and it's a fantastic network opportunity with not just students from other schools, but faculty from other schools, as well as actual UN delegates. The experience is also an opportunity to promote enhanced diverse thinking in a way the university could not otherwise provide. 
students will not only be exposed to, but they'll deeply research another culture to a degree hard to otherwise achieve. And then from that perspective, they have to apply it and they'll have to think critically and look to tackle global conflicts through that lens. They'll also be collaborating with other students who are experiencing the exact same thing <clears throat> and have to work with those students, even though none of them have experience within that perspective to try and tackle those same issues. It also aligns very well with MSU Denver's mission statement. It will be exposing students to a globally diverse perspective, applying concepts that foster creative solutions, utilizing knowledge in a professional environment, and creating a space for students to network and create postgraduate opportunities. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's a fantastic opportunity for students to develop skills. Things like negotiation, communication, teamwork, understanding of international uh, processes and governments. <clears throat> These are all things that it can foster way better than any experience I've had on campus. And I think that would be very beneficial for a lot of our students. It'll also be for student outreach, getting featured in the MSU Denver Political Science Weekly Newsletter, as well as the Political Science Club Irregular Digest. Both of these things will be used to develop interest in not only the Model UN, but the Political Science Department as a whole. And you might be wondering, how does that benefit the university? Well, students who are more interested in political science, be that studying it, be that following it in their personal lives or in clubs, uh, are more civically engaged. And civic engagement, I know, is something that is very important to this university, and it makes the university look very good. So if we garner more interest in the political science club and the political science department, that brings more students to those things, and it fosters a stronger community within the political science community at MSU Denver, which is good in itself, and it increases civic engagement within that community. <clears throat> now this brings us to our last point, which is what I need from you. Uh, this is all possible with your help. Uh, we've been able to secure funding for travel and housing, but as you can see, our, our delegate fees are still kind of up in the air and they're not cheap. Uh, this would be a huge barrier for students like myself who would not be able to otherwise afford it without your help. But I think for the reasons I've demonstrated for you today, it would be a very good investment of university funds and it would be a fantastic opportunity to provide students. With that, I'll thank you for your time and your consideration. You have a great rest of your day. Cool. Um, open, I'll open the floor in case anybody has any questions or comments towards Denny for this. May I speak? Yeah. Do you hear? Oh, okay. First of all, Danny, thank you for putting this, being a part of this. This, this is something that I like: cultural diversity and bringing community together. So I'm all about community. So I want to thank you for composing this. Any other questions or comments? Cool. Well, I motion that we vote on this. I second. Could, wait, can I, before, just quick clarification, I just need to like feel like for the sake of transparency, uh, Model UN is not a registered org, so they don't get the 1500. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just wanted to clarify that. So the, Alejandro, you. would you just like mind saying what, like what they would get and why? Yeah, so since they are not a registered organization on campus, I see you, Will, you're next. Um, since they're not a registered organization on campus, um, we oh, did make the, uh, Hey, John, would you mind muting yourself? Um, like I was saying, uh, yes. So since they're not a registered organization on campus, they do not have, they do, sorry, they do not qualify for the full $1,500 that we have for registered organizations at MSU Denver. Um, we did give the flexibility of giving um, organizations that are not registered a capacity of $1,000. So instead of the $1,300 that they're requesting, they'll be receiving a total of $1,000 if approved by the council. Um, Will? 
Uh, I was just curious, and I don't know if anyone knew, but uh, are these mostly MSU Denver students? Like, what's the what's the makeup of this group that we're uh, funding? I'm just it's curious. It's only MSU students. Oh, MSU. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, did you still have a question? Cool. Um, yeah, so I motion that we put this up to a vote. I second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. What was that? Sorry. Uh, to who? To me? Yeah. What was this? Did you see objections or abstentions? Well, no. Any objections? Yeah. Any abstentions? I, I abstain. Cool. Well, then, yeah, I will be reaching out to them after this to tell them that they got approved. And then moving on to our last presentation, which is for NAC. Um, I just want to put it out there as well that I will be abstaining on this because this is my organization. So. Thanks, Alejandro. Do we have your people here? Yeah. Hi, Jorge. Hi, everyone. Hi, are uh, you are you ready? Yes, let me just share my screen. Beautiful. And then we also have another member, um, Manuel Saldana, if he wants to make himself known. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Manuel. You guys could just call me Manny. I'm the current alumni advisor for New Alpha Kappa, Alpha Gamma chapter, um, and I'll be helping out these fellows with the presentation today. Thank you, Manny. Oh. And then I didn't introduce myself, but uh, I'm Jorge Lopez. I am currently the secretary position uh, for the active body this year. Thank you, Jorge. And then just to start off, um, this is our funding request for uh, the annual event we have in April, which is NACLAND. Uh, just an overview, we're going to be talking about what NACLAND is. Uh, how NACLAN impacts our community, uh, the goals we have for this specific event, uh, and the budget we are um, requesting for. So what is NACLAN? Um, NACLAN, um, to summarize it up, um, basically is a free children's carnival um, provided to the community by us completely free. Um, um, what we intend to do with this free children's carnival is basically inspire the youth um, to pursue higher education. Um, and the way we came about NACLAN is back in <clears throat> 1999, our beta chapter in San Diego, they created the very first NACLAN over there. If you want to go back to the first slide, actually. Oh, no, you're, you're good here, actually. Sorry. And um, through the beta chapter, one of our founders here, Alpha Gamma, he's, he's actually one of the founders of our beta chapter as well. Um, he, uh, he inspired us to create our own NACLAN. Our very first NACLAN at MSU Denver was actually in 2019, but it wasn't the first one in Colorado. Um, actually, the first one in Colorado was actually in Greeley in our Sigma chapter at UNC, uh, which was in 2008. Um, and uh, through all these uh, events, you know, we were inspired to create uh, the very first NACLAN here at MSU Denver in 2019, uh, which I was part of. I was part of actually the, the committee uh, that helped um, bring NACLAN here at, to MSU Denver. And seeing the success that we had in 2019, we decided to um, um, keep doing it every single year. But as you guys know, in 2020, um, COVID happened, so we couldn't do it in 2020 or 2021 due to uh, restrictions um but in 2022 we brought it back and actually during that time i was a president during that time so i oversaw the whole event myself uh, when it came to um getting vendors sponsors um so but when spewing that we saw the result in 2022 like how great of an impact they have on the community uh, we wanted to keep it going every single year or every two years so that's a little bit about the history and what NACLAN is 
So uh, the layout uh, we have for Nakland this year, it's right in front of uh, St. Cajetan's, that little grass area, uh, as well as St. Cajetan's. Uh, so we have access for the bathrooms. Uh, basically, um, throughout the year, we do fundraise uh, for this event since this is the one we try to spend the most on to try to get the most people and uh, children to attend. Um, but yeah, it'll just be like right in front of uh, that little grass area in St. Cajetan's. And then originally uh we did submit a budget for t-shirts uh we did end up changing it because we thought uh the new uh stuff we would be using the budget for would be more um effective for uh NACLAND. but basically uh we're asking for the 1500 to um rent out games for kids uh this is uh Traditionally, uh, it is a Mexican holiday, El Dia del Niño. Um, so it is always, uh, well, that holiday lands on April 30th. So we always try to make it around that time. And it is centered towards kids. Uh, but obviously, we do have like those resources for their families. Uh, our budget, we are using it for those carnival games. And then also the prizes for um like just something we could get them more engaged with, uh, something they could, uh, what do you call it? Like they could look forward to, you know, it's not just like games. They're like, oh, like we could, uh, if we do this, we could get this prize. And then that should be our presentation. Thanks guys. Um, does anybody have any questions for, for NAC? Um, that's a, that's a lot of work. Thank you guys for doing that. Like that's that's really an amazing what, event. Yes, John. What exact day is this event going on? Uh, so this year we are doing it on Sunday, April twenty eighth. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I can't imagine what it is to put a. Um, just a quick, out of curiosity, um, how, what is the average number that you guys get on like attendance? When I um, so, um, usually when the last time we had NACT one was in twenty twenty two, um, and that number was around three hundred, um, wow. which, um, I remember from 2020, uh, 2019, it was around like 150. So it, it grew in popularity. So it is quite a big event um, due to, you know, us promoting quite, quite a bit. Uh, so I can't, we can't guarantee a number, but that, that was the yeah. past numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was just a question out of curiosity that no, no expectations here. I just wanted to know. Thank you. Um, I motion we vote for this. I second. Thank you, Gabe. Okay, we're voting to fund things. Thanks, three. We have two seconds. Um, okay, we're voting to uh, fund a uh, donation $1,500 to NAC for their NACLAN event. Everybody who agrees, say aye. 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 Hold on. I got, I got muted. Aye. I'm for Okay, John, just make sure. You're, yeah, thank you for muting yourself. Okay, any objections? Any abstentions? Aye. Thank you, Alejandro. Um, sounds good. Well, you guys got your funding. Uh, Alejandro, as a budget chair, we'll get back to you with next steps. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Good luck. Good luck with your event. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Can, you, can I see that agenda one more time? Just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Thank you, Kenny. Perfect. Um, we are all set, I believe. Um, I'm in a motion we adjourn this meeting. I second. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, I just want to make a well, it's not necessarily a comment, but um, well, I guess it is a comment, but yeah, um, you know, of course, extending out the invite to any council members or 
um, advisors here that are happy to join. You know, if you have any um, yes. kids or sorry about my dog, um, any kids or any like younger um, family members, feel free. Of course, this is mainly for ch for children and of course for family resources. So if you have any kids or any family members you want to join or bring in, you know, feel free to. But if not, then this won't necessarily benefit you. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Alejandro. Very excited. I do have a nephew I want to bring. So Dr. Brown has something else to say before we adjourn. There has been a motion. So um, after Dr. Brown, I'm going to just... um. Um, it's going to be outside of San Quedro Tans, Dr. Brown. You're yeah, it, it'll be on campus. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. So everybody who agree with adjourning the meeting, please say aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Awesome. Thanks, guys. I will see you in two weeks. Well, not a week. But I'll, two Mondays. Two months. Have a good spring break. <laughs> Everyone have a great spring break. Have a great Bye, spring everyone. break.